got old Didn't we, John, didn't we, dear And we got old But not before our time And we got old Didn't we, Steph, didn't we, Joe And we got old But you two still look so young And we got old Didn't we, Doc, didn't we, you And we got old What are we going to do And I'm glad I'm glad That I got old Didn't our mom, didn't our dad And I got old And I'm glad that you And we got old And we got old And we got old Let's try and keep it up I'm Gareth Williams. I am an Irish man, but I kind of think of myself as a Scottish composer. Uh, I've lived over here for about 16 years and studied here and just stayed. And I guess I'm only masquerading as a singer-songwriter today, but I normally I work as a composer and I write songs for other people to sing. So only one of the songs that you'll hear uh, it's, it's something I wrote for myself. That's the first one. We got old, which I wrote the words and the music of that one. one the other song then is an old Chinese poem I found that's like three thousand years old. That's for a, a that's a set for a soprano who's going to do those next year sometime. And then the other wee song I'll play is was for a National Theatre of Scotland show. I wrote with the writer Oliver Emanuel, and the lyrics are his. And that's a wee show about a guy in World War One about to face the firing squad. So it's not comedy. Um, but yeah, I've been writing sort of operas and theatre pieces and orchestral pieces. So I've worked with like Scottish Opera, uh, the National Theatre of Scotland, as I said, um, the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. And yeah, I make music for those people. But I do, uh, at the heart of everything is a wee bit of uh, songwriting and a bit of work at the piano and, and work for my own voice just to get myself started each time. As well as that, uh, uh, I'm the music director of a wee opera company called Noise, and we make operas specifically with the idea in mind that we want to find out what a Scottish opera is, I suppose, because you know what an Italian opera is, and a German opera, and a French opera, but we sort of say that Scottish opera is a, is a genre, not, not just a company, as it is at the minute. So we want to investigate what that is. So we, we make operas and we put them on in pubs and community centres and up in the islands, and I've had one in a lighthouse and just looking for those spaces that, that sort of define this country, which is a lot more than the, the theatres and the, and the opera houses and things like that. I 
set adrift The boat of cypress wood There in the middle, little, 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 little of the hole There in the middle, little, 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 little of the hole Okay, the tea solo. Uh, tea for two. Good tune. Right. Look at that, you've just exactly two cups of water in the kettle. It's a great sound. See, it depends if you think of the, this is the start of the tea break when the tea's made, or is the start of the tea break when you go to put the kettle on. I, I can never be sure. So I usually rattle through this business pretty fast. Because you want to get to your 15 minute tea break. This is not it. This is still work right now. But eh. Uh, nice wee cups. A home's not a home without one of them. Right. Now. See I think. You need two spoons first of all. Because the sugar isn't going until later. Thank you very much. So that's the business spoon. And then that's your, that's your sugar spoon. You want to keep that one. There. Now I'm gonna. So let's get these tea bags out. Anybody who does business in their cup when the bag is still in, get that squeezed. Get that out, man. You only that's that's done. Time's precious. Time's money. Right. There we go. See. All right. That's your stirring spoon. You keep that for now. You know. I know for a fact you take two sugars. So that's going in. I don't take sugar myself. Notice, I haven't, even, I haven't even discussed the milk. Right. We've got two black teas. Now it's time for the milk. And I am absolutely... I'm excited, man. Full fat milk. I'm not... I haven't allowed myself this in years, but like... This is going to be good. Like... Okay. Splish splash. Oh, 
Okay. Tease up. Fine. I hear They put it over your heart An envelope Over your heart Just here So the firing squad Nowhere to aim Just here Over your heart An envelope Over your heart The last picture I took on my phone. Okay, hang on. Yeah, oh God. Right, the last picture, the most recent picture on my phone is one Marie Claire has just sent me, uh, that she's tagged herself on Facebook. Then another, this is Dave Fennessy boasting that he can charge his phone on the bus. So the, I didn't take those, but. Uh, and then the first one, the last one I took, ah, that's a good one. The four airplanes at the museum. I was there the other day. <laughs> the first celebrity I remember fancying. Man alive. Um, this is going to be way before your time. Like, Does that matter? Do I have to be relevant? See, there's a film called... There's a Michael J. Fox film called The Secret of My Success. 80s classic. And I swear, like when I, there was the lassie on that, I thought about it. I was about nine. I was just thinking about her all the time. I was just walking, walking to school thinking about her. And I said, that's Helen Slater. She was Supergirl. She's a fine, fine woman. Uh, so toss up between her and Jenny Agutter from Logan's Run. But I met her last year and she's just a fine looking senior citizen now. So they're, I mean, they're quite classy choices, I reckon. I mean, I think nowadays it's a lot less classy. Which is better, cats or dogs? Uh, nah, not buying it. It's like... Everyone knows dogs are better, and they're, they're just nicer, they're pleased to see you, they're a good pal, but I'm a cat guy, like, I, I think cats are really funny, like if you put a newspaper on the floor, they have to sit on it for a couple of hours, uh, if you bring home a cardboard box, they live in it for a week, for no reason, and like, yeah, they're just, they're funny, like, it's like living with a wee tiny tiger, and I, I think they're more crack, like if you died in your flat, and you had a dog, like, I think the dog would come over and kind of lick you and try and wake you up, and whimper and be like Grey First Bobby, it would just kind of like, you know, snuggle up beside you and a cat would just start eating your face real calm. But I still, rather, I like cats. <laughs> oh man, I don't know, most embarrassing memory. Um, I don't, like I mean, embarrassing memory is usually funny, you know, and I, I'm, I'm all right with embarrassing memory. I've got, like I've been, it's, it's humiliation I struggle with, I think more than the embarrassment, but embarrassing, like I remember for example, this is about 10 years ago, going skinny dipping after a night out with about five people. And I panned it down the beach, took off all my clothes, 
dived in the ocean. And then you stand up and I realised nobody else had taken their pants off. And I just had to trudge back up the beach, man, and put mine on. That was kind of embarrassing, but sort of funny. Like, yeah, it's more like, even a wee while ago, like I dropped my phone in the street and this guy walked past and he went, like, feel. And I was, I was really angry for the rest of the day. I felt, he totally got me good. And like, that, that stayed with me for about five days, that humiliation. <laughs> I, you gotta learn to let this shit go. My perfect pizza. I'm not a big pizza guy, to be honest. Uh, two toppings, Max. Is that maybe that's controversial? Um, yeah, two toppings, a meat and a vegetable. So ham and green peppers. That's it. That'll do fine. Like you know, so nice standard. Are you sponsored by any? Like, do you want me to plug Domino's or Pizza Hut or anything like that? Because they're shite. Um. But yeah, just a nice straight up uh, old fashioned to, I, I'd, I'd have pushed three ingredients, maybe a bit of onion on there too. From past and present, my top five dinner party guests. Right. Okay, Jenny Agata and Helen Slater, my two celebrity crushes from my childhood, they're coming. Yeah, is that all right? I'm allowed those. And then after that, I mean, it's downhill from there. Um. When is the dinner party? Like, are you free? You want to come? I mean, I'll need a double date for the like for Helen and now. Nah. Um, let me think. Voltaire, I think he'd be a laugh. Uh, that's three. Four's me. No, right. Two more people. A. Uh, my brother's a laugh. I'd have my brother. He's quite funny. He'd be pleased to be there too. And that leaves one more. And what is that? Boy, girl, boy, girl. I need another girl. Um, she should go something. I mean, if Helen and Jenny are there, they're quite highbrow, quite classy. Mariah Carey. You weren't expecting that, were you? What's my biggest fear? Um... Day to day, the fear of missing out, the fear of being found out as a complete fraud. Like, you carry that around. But then on, on, like, on a bigger level, proper fear, anyone who says it's not a shark is an idiot. Right? That, like, that's a proper monster with massive teeth that lives in the ocean and wants to eat your legs. So, absolute 100%, it's a shark. If I found a magic lamp, three wishes. It doesn't always go well for people who wish though, does it? Like if you think of uh, King Midas, that didn't work out so good. He got what he wanted. Uh, the monkey's paw, doesn't end so well when the, the wee dead guy comes back. Um, there's a Herman Hesse story where a guy turns into a mountain. Doesn't go well for him, he gets really lonely. Uh, so I'd take the first wish and I'd just maybe improve my life five to ten percent and then just wait and see what that did you know like nothing it's not too crazy because my life's you know I, but then i wonder what kind of percentage you want you want to get to get to a hundred percent great so yeah i'd, I'd, I'd creep forward five percent and if that worked out well for me maybe i'd wish that that me and my pals would go another five percent edge that forward and then, yeah, world peace, the last one always, isn't it? If I could call myself 50 years in the future, what would be my question? Man, I'm, I'm getting on. Like, I might be dead in 50 years. But let's, t let's, take, the, let's take the jump that I'll still be alive. Um, she said, what would you want to know? Like, we asked my, my granny's 94, I mean, we asked her a couple of years ago what age she'd like to be again. And she said uh, 74, because she could still dance when she was 74. And then, see, so you think, God, it's all ahead of us, isn't it? I mean, if you, I mean, you think the best years are behind you, but maybe, uh, maybe there's more still to come. So, 
that'd be a nice question. I'd like to phone up and go, which year was the best? Which one should I look forward to? And then you just got to hope that it wasn't last year. What do I wish my name was? See, I don't, I don't like my name. Gareth, it means gentle. That's no good, is it? It's like, hmm. But, um, so I'd, I've never really been a big fan of my name. And then I remember when I was ta- doing my confirmation, I picked James as my okay, confirmation name. You know, you get to pick a name when you're 11. And that's because I, I wanted to be James Bond, I suppose. Um, you know, I was 11. I've, I've come a long way. Uh, what? I like my middle name, Patrick. Goes with the accent. Um, the other problem with my name, Gareth Williams, is like... This, this, like, this guy was found dead in a bag a few years ago called Gareth Williams. Do you know that story? Like, he was a spy or something. And, and so, like, he's always going to be number one in Google. Because he just, he did such a, it was so weird. So, like, I mean, I feel really sorry for him. But also, like, I'm a wee bit frustrated that the top spot's always going to be taken. So I need, I might change my name. And if so, yeah, I'll probably go with James. <laughs>